Welcome to the Roundtable Perspective. I'm your host, Lee Arts. I'm joined today by my guest, John Shipton, who is the father of Julian Assange, and Gabriel Shipton, who is Julian's brother. Um, I assume that most of you are familiar with the name Julian Assange and his case that's currently uh, winding its way through international courts. Uh, the U.S. government has charged uh, Julian Assange with 18 counts under the Espionage Act that they say he has risked serious harm to the United States. And they've appealed to the United Kingdom to have him extradited so he can stand trial for espionage in the United States. John, maybe you could just give us a, a brief summary of uh, how the current conditions that are facing Julian um, came about. Let's, let's say that. Well, uh, Julian, uh, <laughs> established that back in 2006 we had Julian called in and said oh, I'm going to start a wiki <laughs> and then back then I didn't know what a wiki was I thought, okay yeah. <laughs> but didn't want to embarrass myself by saying what's that <laughs> <laughs> also he's going to use Tor uh, which is an anonymizer so that uh, people could submit leaks uh, held on the internet as a library so that it became, the wiki would become a forum wherein uh, other experts or anybody that was interested could participate in the analysis and also the uh, inquiry as to whether these uh, particular um, leaks were a concern of the community or were a concern of the broader community or particular communities and consequently the quality of the polity or the quality of the conversation amongst us improves. So and that's and that's what wiki essentially yes. means right yes. that it's a it's a collective contribution to a collective uh, documentation of yes. things. Yes, yes. and okay. so that forum unfolded and as you can see, I think uh, that the participation of I had <laughs> I had lunch with a retired officer of the Foreign Affairs Department. He informed me that oh yeah, we use WikiLeaks when <laughs> we want to check something out. Yeah. So that yeah. is its manifestation. Yeah. And, and when you say leaks, I think we should. Um, I, I think that's a term that gets stressed in the in the U.S claims of the Espionage Act, that these leaks are illegal. These leaps, leaks are um, threatening to uh, the U.S. polity. But they're not just leak. I mean, these are documents that people that have access to the documents have posted on their own to that website. Is that? Is yes, that that's a very fair description. So for example, in the case of Chelsea Manning, released uh, the Iraq war files, the Afghan war files, the Guantanamo Bay war files, the rules of engagement for Guantanamo, also the, uh, uh, the rules of engagement for collateral murder and the, the cables. Mm -hmm. So this is an enormous, huge tranche of information, accurate information written by the United States uh, what would you call them, diplomats or soldiers, and assembled in under SIPANET, which is the uh, net that was used for communication of everything under top secret. And that was um, re released to WikiLeaks. Yeah, I, I mean, well, one, that, of, one of the things when you hmm. think of somebody that's on, uh, being charged under the Espionage Act, that, that you get this idea that Julian is in uh, clad in black and has a black mask on and is breaking into a building somewhere and then absconding with files that were illegally appropriated. But WikiLeaks is a forum that other people have sent documents that they have come to either as a whistleblower or some other way, the supranet. Um, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, I'm sure there's many others to get all of these documents. But in that sense, WikiLeaks becomes a publishing forum as opposed to an espionage outlet, is that? Yes, that's a very accurate description. WikiLeaks publishes. It doesn't, it doesn't surreptitiously obtain leaks. It, they are given to uh, WikiLeaks by well-motivated people who feel 
that a, a certain injustice or certain policies are so heinous that it requires the risk of exposure to give WikiLeaks those informations. And sometimes they're vast. For example, in the Iraq war files, it revealed that there's 15,000 civilian deaths mm -hmm. that were being concealed. This is really important because when I say 15,000 civilian deaths, this involves families and reverberates throughout Iraq. They have children, they have uncles, they have aunties, mums and dads. So 15,000 is deaths, civilian deaths, expands into a burden of grief that's quite phenomenal. And I assume that most people haven't gone to WikiLeaks, <laughs> despite what the, the government says about WikiLeaks dis dispersing this information. I think we have a, a, a graphic that we will show sometime during here that talks about the things that John just said, the 15,000 deaths in Iraq, the 800 people tortured at Guantanamo, uh, Obama and Clinton and the CIA's participation in the coup in Honduras against a democratically elected president, and even the spying that I think was in the newspaper where the U.S. diplomats were spying on the U.N. Secretary General and other yeah, yeah. U.N. delegates. So how do you think the public understands WikiLeaks? Um, I think, you know, I think, well, we can understand it through, I guess, the policy changes that we've seen from the publication. So, uh, you know, the Afghan, um, you know, the, the Biden administration is uh, pulling out of Afghanistan, which is related to um, the Afghan war logs, which exposed all the, um, you know, it was a, a record of the military action in Afghanistan. Uh, and the other one is the, Guant you know, Guantanamo, Gu Guantanamo Bay. That's a Biden administration policy is to close Guantanamo Bay. And through WikiLeaks, um, the torture at Guantanamo was exposed. So I think, you know, that's the best way for uh, the general public to sort of understand, you know, WikiLeaks and how how that sort of shapes, uh, shapes policy here in the US. So uh, I understand Obama gave a commuter to sentence. I think that was of Chelsea Manning. Yeah, that's no, right, Chelsea Manning. Nobody did that for Julian. No, so. And Biden hasn't uh, directed the Justice Department to drop these charges of the Espionage Act. So is that, uh, is that correct? Is st well, they're the, still the, pursuing the, it? The, 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 the st it's sort of changing. So John Dremmer, who is the National Security uh, Prosecutor at uh, the Department of Justice and, and, and pushed forward the prosecution of Julian Assange, he has just resigned. Okay, so he's a, a Trump era appointee. He was appointed by William Barr. William Barr, under Bush the first, was known as the snatcher for his capacity and willingness to utilize Snatcher. extradition treaties to get to judicially abduct people really around the world, whoever, whomever the United, whomever, not the United States, whomever Washington, you know, whom, yeah. because the United States, we travel here and we're treated really well, whomever Washington desired to bring to the United States and place in a federal prison, or in the case of Meng Wenzhou of Huey, to uh, capture technology that the Washington desires. Yeah. I think that's an important distinction that isn't always uh, made, <laughs> that there's a distinction between the American people yeah, and yeah, the American yeah. government. We, we uh, find that, uh, yeah. I mean, this is the second time, third time that, that Gabriel and I, well, say the sixth time, but three <laughs> major times. Back in 91, we came here, and uh, uh, Gabriel was 10 at the time, and we were treated royally. The people yes, took us amazing, to the, the hospitality. Yeah, so, yeah. so you've been doing this for a while. How, when we look at a timeline of uh, Julian's um, difficulties with the US government, can, can you kind of give me a summary of what that looks like? Oh, When God. was he first charged? And I know he, for a while he had uh, refuge in the uh, Ecuadorian embassy and then their change of government. Um, well, the, the, 
It's best to utilise the expert testimony. So we, we rely on Professor Nils Melsley, uh, Professor of Law at Glasgow University. He's also United Nations Rapporteur on Torture and Unusual Punishments. He declared that Julian was a victim of torture over a period of psychological torture, over a period of 10 years and that three, well actually four, four states had participated in this and abrogated their responsibilities to their own laws, to international laws, to the conventions of asylum and committed irregularities of procedure from the, the beginning. So in the Swedish case there were fabrications. What, what year was this? would this be? How long the, This 2010-11, okay. yeah, okay. so that's the start, the fabrications uh, uh, by the uh, police prosecutor in Sweden and the conspiracy between the Swedish prosecuting authority and the Crown Prosecuting Service of the United Kingdom in order to keep, this is a strong point, in order to keep Julian in the Ecuadorian embassy for seven and a half years. Yeah. They advise the Crown Prosecuting Service, constantly advise the Sweden prosecuting authority not to come to London to interview Julian, not to uh, utilise video to interview Julian. This is documented. Letters, emails between the Crown Prosecuting Service and the Swedish Prosecuting Authority. Carrying forward, the uh, CIA embarked upon surveillance of, of Julian through uh, Sheldon Adelson's holdings in Las Vegas. And so that uh, in, in the last two years, Julian was uh, surveilled uh, 24 hours a day, even to the extent of, of putting a microphone in the ladies' restroom. The ladies' restroom was used by Julian and his lawyers to evade other hearing devices and cameras throughout the embassy. It just it become, they also uh, broke into Julian's lawyer's office. They followed the lawyers along the street. They planned to poison Julian. They, uh, um, they also plan, uh, email instructions to make sure he doesn't escape so that we can drag him out. It just goes on and on. It, and it just continues on. You know, Julian won his extradition case in January. So, you know, he, it, he, um, the judge ruled that he couldn't be extradited to the US because it would be, uh, you know, a sentence to death, essentially. Yes. But it's now been six months. Um, the, the United States government appealed that extradition and then he was refused bail. And so it's now been six months since he won his extradition case and we still don't know uh, when an appeal, when or if an appeal will be held. There's no uh, legal requirements no. on those? And so he's, you know, in the, Mac the, big, the highest security prison in the UK, he has no, hasn't had a visit from his family. A, re a reasonable per person might ask, why? I mean, what is, what's, what's, the, what's the threat here? This I mean, is, it's, it's just a continuation of what John was describing, um, but now it's, you know, it's this abusive process. But, but, but why? Terrorism. I mean, why, why, why do you need to... Uh, is Julian, he's been made an example of. So, you know, okay. he's, he's, a, he's a publisher charged under the Espionage Act, the first publisher ever to be charged under the Espionage yeah, Act. The New York Times wasn't charged when they published the Pentagon no. Papers. No, that's right. So why, is it because he's an individual and he's easy target? Is it because the documents he released are too... Revealing. I mean, it, it just boggles the mind. The question always remains. Well, yeah, he doesn't. Why, why are you going at right? Why yeah, are he's you made an example. Julian? He's been made an example of, um, so that everyone else, so that you know, national security reporting uh, is is squashed. You know, and that's why we see from New York Times, Washington Post, uh, their executive editors expressing that uh, this case is a danger to press freedoms in the United States because they can see that you know, they have national security reporting that comes on their desks, and they say, well, will, will we get an Espionage Act prosecution for this? Yeah, yeah. And Julian doesn't have the, you know, he doesn't have the backing of a, uh, you know, a, a big uh, American institution. Uh, so in, in that way, um, you know, he's, for the national security DOJ, he's an easy target. And do you think this has been effective in terms of w whether the U.S. actually gets him extradited, actually charges him 
that would be disastrous. But say he wins this appeal, do you think that if the intent was to, to quash or to intimidate others, do you think that that's been effective? Have you noticed yeah, that certainly. Yeah, yeah. the Australian papers or the US papers or the yeah. British papers are not covering exposés, so to yeah, speak? Yeah, I think, I, I think it has been extremely effective and that's why you, you see um, you know, in February there was 24, the, 24 of the largest press freedom and human rights organisations sent a letter to the, to the, to the DOJ saying that you know, this Espionage Act prosecution of a publisher is a danger to press freedoms. We Did see, that get covered in the, the Chicago Tribune? The it was in the New York Times. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it made it to the Chicago Tribune, but it was definitely um, Charlie Savage has been, been quite good on the reporting in the New York Times. But I think what, you, know, you can see around the world as well that uh, you know, other countries, um, authoritarian uh, states, um, you know, now with, with what's happening to Julian, they find it easier to uh, go after their journalists mm. because they, when they're confronted, they can say, well, look what you're doing to Julian Assange. You, know, you have a journalist in, in prison, innocent man, you know, hasn't been sentenced. He's just <laughs> totally innocent yeah. in his third, third year of prison. Um, and you can see that through, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, foreign affairs spokesperson when, when China was confronted by the State Department, you know, on their press freedom record, their human rights record, they respond, well, look what you're doing to Julian yeah. Assange. Yeah. The UK, the Russian ambassador to the UK, he was, they were confronted about Naval Navalny's treatment. He responded, look what you're doing to Assange. So you can see all around the world that it's it, the effect that the prosecution of Julian Assange is having on press freedoms, not only here, but on journalists in places where there's authoritarian states or governments who, you know, torture journalists, jail journalists all the time. That would be the, the large question for here because journalists may not be jailed, but they are threatened with prosecution under a, a variety of acts that, that judge can uh, I guess a judge can rule that you have to give your sources. And yes. if you don't give your sources, you can be imprisoned, you can be fined. Yep. Your employer may not defend you, so you're kind of on your own. So that certainly would be intimidating. Yeah, terror, um, we, we, I mean, to use their words, you know, it's uh, terrorism. The people are terrified. There's nothing doing for the last six, seven years in reportage since Vault 7. People won't go near it. Yeah. Uh, no, no, single journalist would contemplate fighting for 10 years, having lawyers in five jurisdictions, that's the United States, the UK, Sweden, in, the, in Australia and in the European Union. Lawyers in five jurisdictions having to raise millions of dollars from public appeals to fight a case. There's nobody's going to go near anything it's just too rich. So it, it does have that intimidating yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah. What effect will this have on the public? Um, not just the American public, that's where we are, but what, what effect does it have on the public if they're, well, to some extent, they've been successful in silencing them because, you, as you say, reporters stay away from new documents, new leaks, new information because of that fear. But what does that do to what we know about the world, what we know about our own governments. The polity declines in its capacity to evaluate and guide government. It's just tragic, really. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a clear decline over the last 20 years in the capacity of polities in the West to involve themselves in the formulation of policy and also to criticize analyze and criticize government policy as it comes, as it's proposed, and it's weakened. Um, it's quite tragic, really. And John and I, um, we, you know, have a, we, we sort of have a little chuckle to ourselves sometimes of the irony that we're traveling around the US, um, you know, encouraging people to stand up for their democratic <laughs> rights and their own freedom. You know, we're just two Australian, two Australian blokes, you know, like it's, um, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of ironic. <laughs> well, just I'd like to add that every election we have them in three, every three years in Australia, people jump up and down and say, we want a First Amendment, we want a Bill of Rights, yeah. you know. 
Of course, the politicians put it off. You know, there's not a, quite enough strength. Or I, w I would say that they speak to it, as you've noted Biden does. But uh, Biden may have withdrawn troops from Afghanistan. That's on the headlines. But what's not in the headlines is that he's uh, increased the drone attacks on Afghanistan. So, and that's primarily what's caused the violence and the deaths in Afghanistan, not the troops on yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's it's yeah. a sleight of hand. And if you're not having WikiLeaks and the uh, the revelation of what the actual policy is, we are led to believe what the headlines might tell us or what some yeah, copy yeah, point yeah. from a PR person might tell us. Um, uh, uh, a big question is, what is the uh, potential for getting um, Julian Assange released and to have this uh, be resolved? What, what will it take? Is it going to take uh, a clear tongue, great orator lawyer, or is it going to take uh, some, some other political force? Uh, you know, we it just takes the attention of ordinary people and to make their point of view known to their to their representatives it's quite s simple also the formula the forming of small groups uh, to put their view amongst each other the the awareness percolates up through it, um i i don't expect there to be any rainmakers in this circumstance <laughs> what in australia we have spent now two years wandering around the place and I got about 15% of the, the uh, parliament as actual supporters signed up to the group. The entire opposition, of, uh, so we have, they're the Democrats in Australia, they're called the opposition mm. at the moment. They're uh, supportive. The leader of the opposition is supportive. So that's what's evolved by an upwelling of support, not uh, rain making, yeah. you know, not a, a great rain maker, an upwelling of support. The same I in the United States. You see now, uh, Merrick Garland is the new Department of Justice Attorney General, and he progressively is going about reforming. And I notice with Merrick Garland, there's something very particular that he is actually the opposite of the Trump administration. He does things quietly. He doesn't expand upon things. He takes on one thing at a time. So the, he removed the uh, subpoena from, from uh, USA Today, which requested the IP address of anybody who had clicked to watch a video that was held on the USA Today site which concerned itself with some murders in Florida. That was withdrawn. The inv investigation of the four journalists that worked for the New York Times, that uh, resulted in a, con uh, in a conference between the Mary Garland and the New York Times and Washington Post yesterday, progressively uh, moving away from the confrontations and the distortions of law that the Trump administration had uh, committed. Yeah. Well, I, I hope I would hope that you're right. Well, the, the, I, I, these I think are, yeah. sometimes yeah. the uh, the quietness or even the the examples that you gave uh, makes their case against Assange stronger. They say, look, when we see a case that's legitimate, like the AP reporter or the UPI story or the New York Times reporters, we back off. Which So you can't say that we don't do this judiciously. But I, I, I get to your greater point is that from the ground up when there's uh, citizens that uh, demand some justice and demand the right to know this information and demand the end of the prosecution of people that are sharing what we need to know, I, I think that is a very strong um, statement. So. Well, I, if I could add you know, I add, add to this, that Merrick Garland feels uh, in his position this uh, upwelling of support. It's in Australia, 
The, uh, the Council of Europe has made a de strong declaration that Julian's a protected journalist, the Human Rights Commission of the Council right. of Europe. Right. The, there's a uh, UK cross-party group in the UK Parliament. In the uh, German Parliament, there's a cross-party group of parliamentarians. In the French Parliament, there's a cross-party group. In the Norwegian Parliament, there's a cross-party group. In the Spanish Parliament, there's a cross-party group. N this. Nobody wants this prosecution. It's a mess. Yeah. Every time the, there's a court hearing, the United States or Washington is further embarrassed yeah. by the revelations. It's a mess. Well, we could talk uh, for longer. I wish you well on the rest of your um, tour. Uh, maybe we can post on the uh, end of the day that uh, homerunforjulian.com. Is that correct? Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Um, but that's all. I'm sorry. That's all the time we have on our program today. No, that's great. Uh, 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 thank uh, you, John Shipton and Gabriel Shipton, for joining me today. Uh, I'm Lee Arts. I will see you next time.